Hi there. Welcome to the topic preview for the session on programmable data planes at SICOM 2022. I am Amedeo Sapio from Intel, and I will guide you through this very interesting session and the papers that will be presented. In this session, we will hear about five papers. The first and last papers describe new ways to take advantage of programmable switches, like while the other papers either describe some changes to the PISA architecture or a completely different ASIC architecture for programmable switches. But let's start from some context first, and let's talk about data plane programmability. While today there are many ways to process network traffic in software on general purpose CPUs, processing very high packet rates, like multiple terabits per second, require some form of dedicated hardware especially considering the end of Moore's law and the NR scaling, which means we cannot expect general purpose CPUs to become faster exponentially as in the past. So to reach these high packet rates, switch vendors have been designing dedicated chips for a long time. Usually these chips were designed to perform specific operations like IP packet processing, tunneling, NAT translations, and so on. The switching chip and specific features are coded and the switch operating system could only configure and use those features. But more recently, programmable switching chips have been introduced, which while still being domain specific because they are designed for packet processing, they do not have functionalities and protocols already hard coded in hardware, but have more general hardware capabilities like match action units and parsers that can be programmed to support the specific protocols and functionalities that the user wants. So now the programmer can decide how to best use the hardware resources and what functionalities to implement. And many of these functionalities were not remotely in the mind of those designing hardware, like the ones presented in this session, for example. The programmer writes a program in a domain-specific programming language like before and compiles the program and runs it on the hardware to process packets and lyrate. And this programmability has been great for researchers because now they can think new functionalities like in-network functions, in-network compute, and in-network telemetry, and can quickly write programs, experiment, and evaluate them on via hardware. And many of these research ideas have been used in production networks. Now, one recurring topic in the papers of this session is the PISA architecture, or protocol independent switch architecture. This architecture is based on the idea of reconfigurable match tables and is standardized and maintained by the P4 consortium. This is used by some switching ASICs to provide programmable packet processing at high rates. The PIS architecture is made of multiple pipelines that can process packets in a way that the hardware can reach line rate at terabits per second. I'm showing here three pipelines because of the space limit but typically ASICs have four or eight of these pipelines. Every pipeline is managing traffic in and out a set of switch ports. It is composed of a programmable parser, multiple stages of match action units, and a programmable deparser. The reason why there are multiple pipelines is that with the current technology, clock speeds are not high enough to process these main buckets. So multiple pipelines can process multiple packets in parallel, independently, with no state sharing among pipelines. This architecture is feed forward, meaning that packets always move forward through the processing pipeline, with no state or computation flowing backwards, unless the packet is recirculated and sent back in the switch. So programmers write in their program the headers that should be recognized and their order in the packet. And this is used to program the programmable parser. Then they define the packet processing logic like match action tables, hash functions, counters, and so on. This logic is performed by the match action stages, both in the ingress and egress sections of the pipelines. Between the ingress and the egress pipelines, there is the traffic manager that steers packets from the input port to the intended output port, which is selected by the ingress logic. And finally, programmers declare how the output packet will look on the wire, 
like what headers it must have and in what order. And this is used to program the programmable P parser. An important constraint of this architecture is that line rate must always be guaranteed. So packets have a certain budget of clock cycles to be, process, to be processed, and then they need to leave the switch. So no packet can store the pipeline and delay the following packets. And this means that some complex processing logic, like uh, very complicated network functions, will not fit in the budget. So it can either, so the, this switch either cannot execute that program or, it or that program requires multiple passes to the switch, which reduces the total bandwidth for external traffic that the switch can sustain. So let's see an example of one pipe in action. A new packet is first parsed into individual headers to extract a parsed representation. Then headers and intermediate results are processed by match action tables. In this process, headers can be modified, added, or removed, and the switch state, like packet counters, can be updated. Finally, the modified packet is reassembled and sent out on the chosen port. In this example, for simplicity, I did not show how the traffic manager moved one packet to the right out of the port. But in reality, in the middle of this pipeline, the traffic manager can potentially move the packet from one pipeline to the other. And now let's see how a programmer would use a PISA switch that can be programmed in P4. At the beginning, the device is not yet programmed. And it doesn't know about any packet format or protocols, not even Ethernet or IP. The programmer writes a P4 program to describe the protocol supported and how packets must be processed in the net, in the switch. This can be standard well-known protocols like IP and TCP, but can also be completely new protocols with custom packet processing logic. The P4 program is then compiled, and now the compiler tries to find a way to allocate hardware resources to run the required program. But it can happen that the compilation fails because the compiler cannot find a way to fit the program in hardware. And sacrificing its performance is not an option. In this case, it is up to the programmer to reorganize the program to simplify it or to, to fit in the available hardware resources. And on the other end, if the program is successfully for compiled, there is the guarantee that packets will be processed in that way at line rate. And once the program is compiled, it can run on the switch and now the hardware resources are allocated to provide the functionalities described in the before program. And finally, at runtime, the control plane can configure the hardware. In match action tables, table entries define what actions should be performed on matching packets. And it's up to the control plane to add and remove these entries. So as an example, one entry could say that packets with destination IP addresses in a certain subnet should have the destination MAC address changed to a specific value. So how packets are processed can be changed at runtime by the control plane by updating these entries. So, so far I've talked about programmable switches and the piece architecture, mainly because all the papers in this session propose solutions in this area. But it is important to keep in mind that programmable data planes are more than just switches. There are also programmable NICs, FPGAs, and even in software or general purpose CPUs, it is possible to write packet processing programs using language like P4 and deploy them using frameworks like DPDK and eBPF. Now let's briefly introduce the papers of this session. The first paper presents MIUFA. The key problem that is addressed is that in multi-tenant data centers, virtual machines of a tenant are expected to be logically interconnected by a virtual network fabric, as if in a dedicated cluster, even though all tenants share the same physical network. These virtual fabrics must provide predictable network performance with service level guarantees, like bounded end-to-end -end latency and minimum bandwidth. 
To provide these virtual fabrics, the network fabric must be shared among tenants in a way that every tenant gets enough resources to guarantee the agreed minimum performance. Current state of the art state-of-the-art algorithms do not guarantee a surface level and converge to a set of network allocations in tens of milliseconds. This paper describes a solution called MUFAT, which is based on the collaboration among programmable smart leaks and programmable switches. And the goal here is, is to provide a predictable virtual fabric with guaranteed minimum bandwidth and maximum latency per tenant. MuFab also provides higher than agreed performance to, tenant, to tenants as a bonus if there are an unused resources. In this way, it can reach high overall bandwidth utilization and near optimal end-to-end -end latency. Programmable switches use in-band network telemetry to provide real-time feedback to smartness so that the edge can perform path selection and rate control to reach the optimal allocation of network resources. Now, the second paper of the session describes TRIO, a programmable chipset from Juniper, providing multi-threaded packet processing logic. TRIO is a chipset, meaning that depending on the version, it can be a single chip or a group of multiple chips. This chipset was designed to provide a higher level of flexibility compared to the PISA architecture. In fact, the pipeline architecture by design limits the number of operations per packet, since there is the strict guarantee that the switch will keep up with the line rate and no packet is allowed to stall the pipeline. Some applications, especially the ones providing some form of in-network computation, may require more complex processing than what fits in the limited stages of a programmable switch pipeline. And these applications can accept a reduced packet processing rate as the cost of having a more complex packet processing logic. And for this reason, TRIO is designed with thread-based packet processing engines, or PPEs, that are closer in a sense to general purpose CPUs. Packets are processed independently by packet processing engines using parallel threads and a hierarchy of memory systems. And each thread will execute as many instructions per packet as needed in a run to completion model. Since there is no limit on the number of operations per packet, a single packet may use hardware resources for many clock cycles at cost of limiting the packet processing rate. And this means that TRIO can provide the flexibility to choose a trade-off between complexity of the packet processing logic and the packet processing rate. And finally, TRIO is programmed with a C-like language called microcode, but they are also working on the support for P4. Then the, the, the following paper presents Thanos, an extension of the PISA architecture to support programmable multidimensional filtering over stateful metrics. So the paper shows that the current generation of programmable switches are unable to support some multidimensional filtering policy, policies at line rate due to their constrained, constrained memory and computation semantics. So some example of such complex multidimensional filters are shown here and others are presented in the paper. The first one is select the path with delay A less than a certain value D and the utilization less than another value Q. The second is select switch ports with packet rate above a certain level. So these are filtering policies based on stateful metrics that change in real time, like packet rate and link utilization. And they cannot be supported by match action tables and register arrays available in today's programmable switches, unless the packet goes multiple times through the switch using the circulation, which reduces the available network bandwidth. Thanos extends the PISA architecture to add an additional filtering module in, in hardware to support filtering of multiple dimensions directly in the data plane while sustaining the line rate. And this module uses a new data structure called sorted multidimensional bidirectional map and extends the functionalities of the action units 
to provide a fully reconfigurable filtering pipeline that can implement the policies that I mentioned and the policies that I mentioned and, the many, and many others. And this new module only requires a small additional area on the chip. The next paper describes MP5, a new switch design to support stateful applications on multi-pipeline switches. And the problem that this paper is addressing is that current programmable switching chips use multiple pipelines to reach high processing rate, rates. And this is because clock rates cannot increase due to physical limits. And each one of these pipelines processes one packet per clock cycle. And to keep this pace, the memory that is used and updated by the data plane is not shared nor synchronized among the pipes. Every pipe has its own memory for things like registers and counters, and their value is not synchronized across pipes because the logic required to keep them coherent cannot support this fast pace. So stateful applications that keep state in pipe, they keep state in pipe local memory and want the state to, the, to be synchronized among all switch pipes, need either to limit the self to a single pipe or use recirculation. And both options limit the available bandwidth that the applications can use. So this paper describes a new switching chip design that extends the multi-pipeline piece architecture to support sharing state across multiple pipes. And the design is based on processing homogeneity, meaning that all pipelines run the same identical program. program. Memory that is dynamically sharded among pipes and is shared so that can be updated by any packet. Inter-pipeline packet steering, meaning that there is a crossbar between every two consecutive, consecutive stages so that a packet can move from one pipeline to, the dif to a different one when moving from one stage to the other. And preemptive state access order enforcement, which is a way to enforce packet ordering, which is required since now packets are moving among pipes and could be reordered. The paper also describes a new language and compiler to program MP5 and shows that the hardware design requires only a small additional chip area. And the last paper of the session deals with gray failures in inter-service providers networks. A gray failure is defined as an hardware malfunction that causes non-transient non packet loss on a subset of forwarded packets. The key here is that only some packets are affected by these failures. So traditional techniques relying on probe packets or packet sampling are not reliable because they may miss the failure. There are other techniques that have been proposed to catch even losses due to gray failures, but they are targeting data center or cloud networks that have low latency, high bandwidth links, and fast connections to the control plane. So these solutions do not fit the specific properties of, inter of internet service providers networks that are geographically more distribute, distributed. So FANCY presented in this paper addresses this gap, designing an in-network solution to detect gray failures in internet service provider networks. The user can decide to monitor traffic matching a set of table entries, and all the packets matching those entries will be counted and accounted for. And to limit the memory requirements in the network devices, FANCY provides also a second level of accuracy that allows to aggregate counters together with a hash-based tree to, collect mon to collectively monitor multiple entries. And neighboring switches establish counting sessions to synchronize packet counters and detect packet losses and share the results of counting sessions using an inter-switch protocol. So this has been a brief preview of the programmable data plane session at SICOM 2022. I invite you to attend the session on Thursday and ask questions in person or on the dedicated Slack channel. Thank you and enjoy SICOM.